Hello everyone. In the previous lecture, I discussed the applications of radioisotopes in healthcare, both in diagnosis and therapy. And I also explained the three main concepts behind the, uh, these applications. I will like to repeat those three concepts for the sake of continuity. And in the present lecture, I will discuss the applications of radioisotopes in industry, environment, agriculture and food technology. Though the topic is very fast, I will just take one or two examples in each area to bring home the point. So as I mentioned previously, the radio isotopes can be used in the form of radio tracers. The radio tracer, you can use to trace the path of a element. So that finds a lot of applications which will be clear when we discuss these applications. Radio isotopes are emitting radiations which are highly penetrating and this can be used like we use x-rays for detecting the fractures in human body, in the bones. You can use radiations in many applications which we will make everything very clear subsequently. And the other aspect is that radiations can kill pathogens, they can generate heat, they can introduce defects in the materials. So, and you can, you can even use polymerization of the material. So, there are, you know, you open up a new chap, new areas for applications. And this is a kind of, one has to do a research, what way you can use radiations in different applications. So, this so atoms in the service of mankind, that is the concept we use, that not only these radioisotopes, uh, when we use, we have to have in mind, what is the benefit? So the benefit can be in terms of money, you save the money. There can be alternative methods, you can, but you can save money, you can save manpower, and you can save time. So unless you have the gain in terms of these three parameters, money, manpower, and time, if there is an alternative methodology, then it is no, there is no point using this. So it should score over other techniques, both in terms of all the three aspects that I just mentioned. So, I will just give some examples of each these three previously one I have mentioned. Radio tracer concept in industry and the list is endless. I give you some examples also. So, leak detection in buried pipelines and high pressure heat exchangers. So, their pipelines are going thousands of kilometers like from refinery from uh, no, Gujarat to Mathura. There is a big line in refinery going. The refined trees in Mathura and crude is going from um, somewhere in Jamnagar. So, there is a leak in this, uh, how, how, how you detect the leak. So, and if you have to dig out the whole thousand kilometer, it's a very, very Herculean task. So, that is where the advantage of radioactive isotopes. Seepage location in dams and water bodies, you can trace the path of the water by using radio traces. Flow rate measurements what rate the flow is low fluid is flowing time of mixing and blending in the different types of uh, industry residence time distribution measurement there are mixers and many chemical reactors wear rate measurements by you know this uh, you can you can produce radioisotope in the machine part and it is wearing out worn out so the radioactivity will decay as a function of time you can see how the wear and, tear, wear and tear takes place sediment transport in ports and harbors effluent dispersion in coastal waters these are all very big uh, experiments which the enormity of the experiments will be clear when we i will show you some results effective management of oil fields so oil field you know there you are is taking out the oil and then the water will gush so how much time we can continue to tap this oil field there are techniques based on radio tracers you can do the time management and radioactive particle tracking technique for flow visualization in the reactor which is copied from outside how the particles or the reagents are moving in the reactor you can track and you can simulate the the processes that are occurring inside that so these are some of the examples which I wanted to highlight, but I will take some of the from this and give actually illustrate more by these examples. One of them is leak detection in buried pipeline, and I will I will give you the real examples 
from one of the them is gas authority of india limited visakhapatnam so there is a pipeline very short uh, explanation i will give suppose you have got a pipeline here and the fluid is flowing from here to here it can be hundreds of kilometers and suppose there is a leak somewhere here now how do you uh, know you find out where is the leak this is the project you cannot dig the whole line so what they do they first put place the marker sources from the surface like cobalt 60 sources from the surface on the from the surface you just dig them and put above the pipeline they are outside the pipeline and now you inject the uh, fluid containing the radioisotope like methyl bromide if it is a liquid you can use bromine 82 labeled liquid and then wherever there is a leak the activity will come in the soil and now you take a detector through this pipe at a particular rate the detector will detect not only the leak but also the gamma ray from the markers so in the output of the detector you will see these markers that will, they will tell you the position of these markers so you can know suppose there is a leak here you will see a broad peak here this broad peak is due to the leak and you know this is between these two positions so in a very short span of time you can identify at what place the leakage has taken place and you can you need to dig up only in that area to plug that leakage so this way you can save time effort money and manpower and this is the typical you know photograph how people are injecting the radio tracer through this pipeline another important application of this radio tracers is residence time distribution so there is there may be many, many different types of chemical reactors where you mix mix the reagents a plus b going to some some system and in, there is some process taking place in the system and then there, there is the output so you have an input and the output now inside the reactor from outside it is blank you do not know what is the dynamics you know hydrodynamics of the material that is undergoing uh, churning in the system so you want to know that how what is the time during which the the reactants stay or the product stay in the react in the reactor so you put a detector here you put a detector here and then you inject the radio tracer the radio tracer when it goes at inlet it will show a sharp peak because it is quickly flowing in the system and the outlet you will see you will get a broad peak because inside the reactor the radio isotope labeled the material will take some time so for example you are mixing sand and cement so you you tag the sand with the radio isotope like scandium 46 and then you want the homogenized mixture coming out of this blender so inside how much time it is residing and what is the uniformity you can know from this one so residence time distributions are utilized in many chemical reactors the performance of the chemical reactors are actually determined you can have some even industrial circuits you know there can be many other plants then mixing units i was telling the mixing units cement and sand or there can be many other industries where you are the chemicals are being mixed so how well the reagents are getting mixed you can find out from the residence time distribution so residence time distribution is given by like et is the fraction of species that has spent time between t and t plus delta dt in the reactor so this is the this is the concentration of the the, the particular species that has come in the time t plus dt t to t plus dt and this is the integration in the denominator you have the entire concentration total area so this is the total area under this graph is the concent total concentration and at a particular time what is the fraction of activity that is come so this is the residence time distribution for how much time the reagent is residing in the reactor this study can be obtained then you have flow rate measurements you know they are all big projects very very big projects involving hundreds of crores of rupees and you can see by one experiment one can save so much of money and in fact sometimes you will find there is no alternative to these techniques so 
So for example, a, if you are having a, this is actually a hydroelectric plant, you know. So uh, there is a sub 3.6 meter pipeline which is taking the water to the turbine. Now the pump, this vertical turbine pumps, you know, they are have they have a rated capacity that how much water they will throw pump per minute or so. So that is the capacity of the pump. So you want to calibrate this because how much is the power consumption of this pump? What is the flow uh, of the pump? So to, cali to calibrate these pumps, you know, you require to do investigation and how to investigate the pump capacity, the flow rate and all that. So for this, the Broman 82 can be used as a tracer. So what you do, you measure the flow rates of water. So in water, you can mix the sodium bromide and so what so bromine will go with the flow of water. So you can use this technique and you can put suitable detectors at initial and the final stage and you can see the activity that is flowing. So the, you can check the calibration of flow meters or you can check the flow of any fluid, you know, steam, liquid or gas you can use. So in fact, these are the pumps made by the industry and when they are selling to this particular thermal power company, they want them to calibrate these pumps to, to ascertain, to give a certificate. This is the capacity of the pump and this is the wattage of the pump. So if you want to validate the capacity of the pump, the water budgeting and optimize the power consumption, then the, the, the industry can come to the, the, the people who are doing this kind of investigation. So this is actually an example which the Department of Petroleum Energy in fact solved this problem for the industry partner. Another uh, kind of investigation is silt movement in ports and harbors. So what is this silt? See, in the big ports, you know, uh, the, the big ships are coming to the dock and gradually uh, you will find that this dock height will come, the, the dock, the, the, the shore, no, the level will go up because wherever uh, this, there is a movement of the silt in the sea. And so what do they do? They do a dredging. Dredging means they remove that silt and park it somewhere in the sea so that the big ships can come to the shore. But over a period of time, that silt will again come and you have to do the dredging again and again. So it is very time consuming. So in, uh, in fact, this is an experiment at Calcutta port. So uh, what was done actually that the sand particles were labeled with scandium 46 as a tracer. So the movement of the sand can be trace the using this radioactivity of scandium 46. So what they do, they dredge this silt and park it somewhere look, quite far off. And so this is the place where they have placed the dredged sand, which is not tagged with the radioactive. And over a period of time, now you map, you measure the activity of scandium 46 in x, y direction. And you can see here, these are the contours of activity asymmetric points and so essentially this tells that this tracers this tilt can move in these directions in this direction there is no movement and so you can identify in which place you should put that rigid sand silt so that it does not come to the port or harbor as a function of time so these are the kind of mega experiments which you can do so they are used to investigate suitability of dumping site for the dredged material and optimization of the dumping operation. So in what place they should keep uh, place the dredged sand so that it doesn't come back to the place from where it was taken out. These are the kind of experiments uh, people are doing. So these were the few examples of radio tracer application where you trace the path of a radioisotope and then you can trace the path of sand, you can trace the path of a chemical, anything you can trace the path of a fluid, even water body, you can trace the path. The other application is penetrative power of fluids, so where the gamma rays are penetrating through a solid material and they follow this exponential decay, I equal to I0 raised to minus mu x, where mu is the attenuation coefficient. So these techniques are called non-destructive testing methods, NDT. NDT, you know, very useful in industry for measurement of thickness, density, defects in the materials. Now, for example, in the high technology materials, there is some welding to be done. 
know so how good is the quality of the well because they are going to remain in the plant for long long times if the, if the welding is not proper it will affect the integrity of the system and for that gamma radiography is used extensively in industry in fact we train the people who do gamma radiography in the industry so there is a training program in the department of atomic energy one can enroll for that and do the certificate course and then you can become a radiographer so the non destructive examination of welds and castings you know, this is not the only example you can have many other examples you require you have a high energy gamma source and low energy gamma source for radiography if it is a heavy material big big equipment you require high energy gamma typically a cobalt 60 of 20 kilo 20 20 curie and if it is a uh, smaller uh, product you know some smaller machine then you need to have low energy gamma emitter and 100 curie of erdm192 so like boilers pressure vessels ships aeroplane components all can be investigated for their integrity their structure there is no crack inside micro cracks you no know, there could be micro cracks the ndt the radiography can tell you even micro cracks and so this is a typical example of a a, a component you know a component which has got thick parts and thin parts so when you when this is a this is the area where it is thin walled that means it is a doesn't have much thickness so when you do gamma radiography with low energy iridium 192 you can see some opaque part but when the same thing you see in gamma in cobalt 60 you don't see that part because gamma energy with cobalt 60 gamma will just pass through so by playing with the gamma ray energy you can investigate the this, this different types of samples small or big and this is a typical gamma camera for roly developed by brit the board of radiation astrotechnology bae so this this can be taken and you the, the source is kept inside the sealed and when you want to do the radiography you take out the source from the sealed expose the sample and again after the exposure you take it back to the sealed so it can be transported in uh, to different places for ndt experiments so these are the kind of you know big uh, machines radiography of aircraft engine of concrete structures or even the plug valves you know, the small as well as a big you know aircraft the big machines can be done you need to do radiography because you have to, as a part of the quality control you have to assure the end user that this will meet those requirements so when you say an aircraft you know the life the the probability of accident one in billion times how that number comes because they have undergone through top test flight this kind of testing now i come to the another ndt technique called computer tomography ct ct the computer tomography is an advanced version of radiography where you not only do the take the image you get 3d image of the equipment so ndt of engineering and industrial specimens you can do even cross sectional images of the internal structure of the object so in radiography you just expose the equipment to the gamma rays and you take the film you take a film on which you can take the image of the organ like you take an x ray so radiography is like x ray but tomography you know is much more advanced so you have an object you put the object here and there is a there is a source inside this ceiling so there is the it will come as a beam through this collimator and you can do x y z movement of the object by a goniometer and then the gamma ray will go and by a collimator will fall in the detector so what you do you rotate the object in x y z direction in the form of thin so you get image cross sectional image of each slice of the object so you can you can go take it up you get the circular plates circular images you take in x y direction you get different cross sectional area and those images are then as constructed by the computer and develop the 3d image of the machine part so this is the more advanced version of radiography in where you you get the 3d image and this 3d images are then you can see you such a crystal clear image you get after computer computer tomography so this is a typically a cold bed test reactor you can see the kind of image that you get by computer tomography the full digital radiograph 3d surface rendering from ct data 
representative. So you can see the kind of dilution that you get because you have a collimated beam of gamma ray and then you get the image. So in one uh, scan, you will get a particular plane of the system and you have thousands of scan in x, y, z direction. So that is the kind of resolution that you get. Micron levels of fractures you can detect using computer tomograph. This is the image of a typical metal or ceramic handicap of electronic equipment. So again, uh, the point I wanted to emphasize that by computer tomography, you get much more well resolved images than the normal pedography. Another application is in gamma scanning. Gamma scanning is another area for troubleshooting investigation. So you have, suppose you have got this, what you call as the fractional distillation in the refineries, you know, you have big towers and the big towers, different heights will have different collections of different types of products and the, of the petroleum products. So now you, this, these are, you know, they are working for long, long time and there is some defect inside, it is, you are not getting a product of desired quality. So how do you rectify? You see, if you open it up for, for maintenance, you know, it may require shutdown for a week or two and that is huge loss to the industrial industry. So what you do non-invasively, you can do, you put one detector, you put a source, cobalt 60 source here and you put a detector, sodium iodide, thallium detector and they are, they are, they are in, moved synchronously. So, there is, so if this, the source moves, it has also moved by the same. So they, can, they are joined together. And now, what you are getting is the inter, this, this attenuation of the gamma ray of cobalt 60 when it is passing through the internal parts of the column. So this column, so this is the cartoon of the column. And there are different plates inside, you know, different fittings are there. So the gamma ray intensity you will see. So when the gamma ray is passing through a thick object, the intensity will be low. So that tells you the profile of the different objects inside the column. Now, if you have taken this profile in the beginning when the column plant was started, and you can periodically monitor. So as a function of so any time, suppose there is a problem in the plant, you can immediately run the scan and find out if there is a flaw. So this scanning of this column, and it is very low cost. A cobalt 60 source and a detector sodium and thallium is not at all very costly. So manpower will be one or two personnel and in a day you can do the whole investigation. So you save the time, money and the manpower and by very very low cost, very low short time you can do troubleshooting of the problems that are occurring in the plant. So the diagnostics of problems in operating columns like fractional distillation, separation, stripping etc. in petroleum plants. So, very quickly, uh, in fact, many of these refineries, the Hindustan Petroleum, uh, all many in the, in petroleum companies employ these techniques to do troubleshooting whenever they have problems in their plant. Now, I come to the another aspect again, the penetrative power of the radiation is called the thickness gauge, nucleonic gauges. So, you can, you can determine the density, thickness, level of a compound, and so on. So, measuring the and monitoring the thickness of films, sheets and metals and plastics during manufacturing. So you have a like giving a paper industry. So the paper industry, the paper is prepared and it is moving through a conveyor belt. And you know, the paper quality you say this much, uh, you know, gram per square meter, GSM, 100 GSM, 50 GSM and so on. So how do you maintain the quality control? You want to know. So for that, you know, you can have a very simple system. You have a radioactive source outside the this, this is the paper which is moving. Above the paper, you have a source. Below the paper, you have the GM Geiger Muller counter, very cheap equipment. And you suppose it is a it is a so for example, if you have a uh, metal plate, you can put beta. If you have a thicker plate, you can put gamma. If it is a thin paper, you can put even alpha also. And then measure the activity as a function of time. So, suppose it is the thickness is constant, you will get th constant activity in the counter. But whenever there is a change in the thickness, the intensity will change. So, beta and R gamma can be used to find out the change in the thickness. Whereas alpha, in case of alpha, the energy of the 
for a very thin foils, you know, micron thick foils, you can use the change in alpha energy because alpha intensity will not change as a function of thickness, but alpha energy will change. So for very thin foils, micron thick or less than that, you can use alpha and for a millimeter thick, two millimeter cube, you know, you can use beta or gamma sources. So they have the advantage of non-contact movement. You can place it even the plant is running. You can do continuous measurement, accurate, safe and reliable. There is hardly any maintenance. The plant is not shut down. Gauges can be often be installed and commissioned without process shutdown. And as the sources and detectors are mounted externally from the vessel or process, they are completely unaffected by the chemical and physical property of the product. So it, it is you know non-invasive. The plant is running. You can do all modification in, the, in this system to determine the thicknesses without affecting the plant. That is the kind of advantage with this. Like you know, the examples are level gauges, oil level in refineries. You know, in refinery the the vessels are you know few thousand uh, very big ones, uh, lakhs of liters plant. So this level level of the fluid you can do. You have a source and a detector. You put a source and detector, and you can play the. So when when the gamma ray source is below the level, you will see the high attenuation, and when it is above the level, there is less attenuation. So you can see there will be a discontinuity at the level. Similarly, you know this uh, when you have the mixers, and so there is an uneven level inside, like clinkers. You know they are used in cement industry. So you put a source and a detector here. And from the attenuation, the intensity of the gamma ray in the detector, you can see the level of the material inside the this, this plant. The, the glass furnace, the glass, the molten glass, what is the level of molten glass? You don't know from outside. But if you put a source and a detector, source and detector, the attenuation in the gamma ray when it is going to the molten glass will be more, and if it is above the molten glass level, it will be less. So you can again see very precisely you can find out the level of the glass furnace. So the level gauges, similarly you have density gauges and so on. There are many many areas where you can use these radioisotopes. Okay, lastly I will discuss the application based on radiation effects, the heating, the killing of pathogens and so on. And there are, I will talk about three areas. One is the agriculture. In agriculture, you can do crop improvement by radiation induced mutations. Radiations, when they are bombarding the seeds, then they can generate. See, normally the seeds are undergoing mutations, even our body is undergoing mutations, but that is happening at a very, very small time, 10 power minus 5, minus 6 scale. But by mutations, you can accelerate the mutation by radiation, you can accelerate mutation by orders of magnitude, 1000 to 10,000 times faster mutations can take place. Food technology, the radiations will kill the pathogens, so you can do disinfestation and you can delay the ripening of the fruits and you can do sterilization of medical products. Again, the pathogens can be killed and also the radiation processing, you know, radiations can induce polarization in materials. So like rubber, the vulcanization of the rubber can done into radiations, you can hygienize the sewage sludge and use it for the manure. In cities now, it is a big problem of sewage sludge. So you can make it hygienic by using radiation, and then you can use it this manure. Curing of surfaces, coatings, heat regulable foam. So you know, in radiation technology is a vast area. There are a lot of applications. You can modify materials. You can graft a compound on a solid support. You know, there are a lot of uh, modification processes using radiations. You know, radiations can induce cross-linking in uh, material polymers. It can even cause chain scission, in, like Teflon can be powdered by radiation, but the normal polythene become hard by cross-linking. So I will not touch upon this aspect because we don't, I don't have much time. I will just quickly give you the example of the first three. So in agriculture, you can do crop improvement by mutation. As I mentioned, the mutation, radiation induced mutation, so you can enhance the mutation by radiation. So they irradiate the seeds by gamma rays. The, the gamma ray will cause genetic changes in the seeds. And then you will sow these seeds. So a priori we cannot say what will happen to the seed. We cannot selectively generate positive mutation. So mutation can be negative 
So you you will come to know after you reap the uh, harvest the seeds. That mutation can be positive. That means the the the, the, the fruits that you generate for, out of this mutated plants, they can have good traits, positive traits, or there may not be any mutation, no effect. So once you show them, once you harvest them, then you pick up the ones which have the positive traits. So the genetic variation you see and select them and multiply them, five, six cycles. So once the genetic changes have become stabilized, then the variety is released. The government has to, there are government agencies which will approve that you, this is now certified to use by the farmers. So what are the traits? What are the attributes that you, you can have high yield variety? So per hectare, how many quintals? That is a parameter. Disease resistance, this, the, after genetic modification, they have, you know, the, the mutations, they have become more disease. They all adopted. They can adopt, you know, the, the visual conditions or tropic conditions or better nutritional nutrient value. So these are the parameters which you can see. If they are improved, then you know that you have produced a good material. Second is the applications in food technology. You can prevent the sprouting of vegetables because the radiation will kill the, 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 the enzymes and bacteria. They will deactivate the enzymes. They will kill the bacteria. You can extend the shelf life of perishable product, food products because you can delay the growth of the microorganisms. You can disinfect the food products, spices, many products, meat products, canned food products you can preserve for longer time and you can delay the ripening of fruits like mangoes. So this is a typical, you know, the plant for radiations and so many products have been certified, approved for radiation by gamma rays, potato, onion, many, several types of food products are now certified for radiation by the gamma rays. So there is a long list of products I have listed here, meat, meat products, chicken, spices, onion, potato, ginger, garlic, salad, mango, rice, mushroom. All these products are now certified for irradiation to improve their self life or to do this infestation. Lastly, as I was mentioning, you can sterilize medical products using a irradiation plant. And this you now, so you pack the implements, the device, medical devices, like you can use usual throw types of medical syringes, surgical gloves, tools used in surgery, tweezers, scissors, and so on. And you pack them in cardboard boxes. This, these are the cardboard boxes. And you put them, so there is a source in the plant. And this, in the conveyor belt, the source, the packets will go, stay there for some time. And after proper dose has been delivered, they will be taken out and then sent to the, in the places, hospitals or industry. So there are several plants in the country now running. And one of the first plant was isomet at Trombe for the last, in fact, now not three, more than four decades it has been working. And this industry is very much growing now. Now people have radiation plants, not only for medical uh, sterilization, but also for food, techno food preservation. So combination of medical sterilization and food technology are making the throughput high. And many people, private people are now developing these uh, radiators for the benefit of mankind. So that's all I have to say. I, I wanted to bring home the point that not only the research should be done for the, the, the understanding the system for independent phenomena, but the research that is going on in the laboratory must reach the land. And for that, you need to have innovation, development of technologies. So you, you do the research, then de develop, demonstrate and deploy. So any research should be ultimately going to useful for the mankind. Thank you very much.